Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Doing something a little bit different today. I'm taking a look back at a previous rally that I've done. Seeing as I'm not doing any rallies in real life at the moment myself, I thought I'd look back at an old event and sort of uh, take the piss out of myself a little bit. So without any further ado, let's get into this one. It's the Circle of Ireland Rally 2015. It was part of the European Championship and I was doing it in a Peugeot 28R2. I heard you pretty good. Let's see. Here we go! So this is the class of 2015 ERC Juniors. A lot of quick guys in there. You probably know some of them. We've got uh, Chris Ingram on the left there, Steve Rockland. Uh, we've got ML Burkfist and a few other really quick guys. So it was a, a tough championship to race in. So here's the uh, first shot of me. This is European coverage and we've done a little piece to begin with before the rally started. He's competed in the British and Irish Championships. This is his first year. It's like the most cringiest the walk in ever. For six months now, he's been working with 22 year old co driver <laughs> Noel O'Sullivan. They were fifth in lap. It's like the worst mug shot ever. Um, Noel probably never done much of this stuff before, but I don't uh, look too good at it either. And some of, the, some of the main differences are I've got a, a better beard now. It's more thicker and fuller and better hair as well. But. I think this was after a couple of runs in uh, shakedown, so I'll forgive myself for the bad hair. Yeah, and they want to go on at home. is my home rally, but I don't really know the stages as such. I've never competed on the rally before. So I'm giving plenty of excuses here to begin with in my interview. <laughs> I, I think I was a bit worried that I was going to be slow because I wasn't fastest in the shakedown so far, but we actually won the qualifying stage, so I must have. Uh, must have got my head down and really pushed through that one. And I live maybe an hour and a half away, so it's now always nice to drive at home because uh, you have a good feeling with the spectators and uh, you kind of know the area and the stages. Kind of contradict myself now because I said I don't know the rally too well because I've never done it before. And I said that it's good because you've got plenty of local spectators and you know the area, but I think I meant it's familiar in a familiar place. I definitely got better at uh, interviews since then and, and media skills. Stages. Um, Irish tar is bumpy tar, kind of crest, blind crest, tight corners, grass up the middle of the road, so it's going to be a tricky grass rally. Grass up the middle Myself of the road. John are both relaxed. Um, Recce day one went well, we made good pace notes, and also with day two. Um, hopefully, we can finish and finish with a good result. Probably one of Noel's first interviews as well in, in a sort of rally environment. Um, you done a, a good enough job, but it's pretty funny. There's drivers that are very, very quick, which is uh, kind of, it's, it's good competition, but you're always having to drive near enough flat out to be on the pace. So um, I'm enjoying my time in the championship and I want to do as well as I can and learn. As I say, I haven't the, the most experience um, out there in the field because uh, I'm only 20 and I've done, this will be only my second international rally. So. Well, uh, coming up with plenty of excuses here um, that I haven't, haven't had that much experience in international experience, which was true, but it uh, didn't really matter as you find out in the next day. So, um, this week we had a two-day recce, and then myself and John at the evenings when we were finished recce, we'd spend four hours at the DVD going through the notes of each stage for every day, and we'd correct notes, change notes, See, I don't think that's true, what Noel just said, because he never helps me with the notes, I always have to do it on my own, so what he's saying here is not true, I have to do it on my own and make the changes myself. Try to learn more of the stage, because you're only allowed two passes in, it's hard to know a stage after two passes. Uh, that is true, it's hard to know a stage after two passes. Obviously you have the pressure of people thinking that you're going to be fast, so... Local local lads are under pressure, they need to be fast, so I'm you know, just relaying that information. Do the best job we can. The first day started for the juniors like everybody else with a Not bad little feature that, plenty of uh, coverage in your sport, can't complain. Highly slippery. This is Emil Bergqvist, the Sweden is Opel Adam R2, leader of the championship after round one in Latvia. So Emil Bergqvist was the uh, championship favourite, he went on to win the championship. Ireland and we won that rally. And, uh, He'd done a, a pre-event test a week before in Ireland so and... Good. Yeah, he uh, probably had more seat time than we did. Berkvist was uh, the champion that year. Grebo was the champion the year after, I believe. Eight seconds battling for the top five this morning. And this Opal in fifth position, fast and consistent. Some uh, very quick drivers. 
Alex Zavada of Poland, second fastest on stage. Zavada was a pretty funny guy. He um, was a bit nuts. Like he crashed quite a lot from memory, but pretty fast whenever he was on it. So yeah, that was Chris. Uh, probably the guy who was looking to beat that weekend. Uh, he won the Colin McRae flat out trophy the year before, and it was uh, going to be a tight battle between me and him. Here's me jumping my way through the Irish lanes. It's funny because that jump is actually massive. It's Hamilton's folly jump and people can fly really far in it. Whereas I break quite a lot and stayed on the ground and got me drive. So I think it was quicker. We won that stage both times. So uh, you don't have to fly to be fast. Testament, fastest on stage two and three with a 19 second advantage after Michael Ingram admitted he was a little too cautious. It's Gino Box. Belgium, supported by Belgium Federation. I think he got picked up. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say, I think he got picked up by the Federation, done two years, and uh, hasn't done much rallying since, so that's the way sport goes. So he's damaged his suspension there. Steve Rockland, very quick on gravel, maybe not so much on tarmac. Just became a father, so congrats on that, Steve. You're no longer a junior. Zavada's bad luck. The pole forced to retire after a crash on the stage. Emil Bergqvist, maybe the most complete driver in the championship. Solid second. Championship leader being smart. But a perfect day for local driver John Armstrong. Was it a perfect day, though? Because uh, you'll find out soon. We uh, we in a mess or something. You have to stay tuned to find out what that was. Well, I wanted I wanted to be fast, so uh, I'm I'm happy with how it's going. So we'll try and uh, get everything sus now. To get everything sus means uh, figure everything out with the car at service. So it's uh, sort of Irish slang. But this was the end of day interview um, of day one, and uh, we knew we might have been in a bit of trouble. So uh, I was a bit bit stressed with that, and we had a misfire develop with the car. So. Yeah, it was stressful times after a good day behind the, the wheel. On the pace again, so... so John Armstrong leading. Can you see, 28 seconds second ahead of everyone else. So it was a good day in the office. Quist. Hmm. The big surprise of day one was John Armstrong in the Persia. Love the sad music in this part. It makes it really uh, seconds, dramatic. Probably more dramatic than it was. But a penalty. Yeah, it was heartbreaking at the time, that's for sure. Yesterday evening, um, we missed a tyre check control, which uh, unfortunately gave us a five minute penalty. So it was a, a big shame, but we uh, also developed a problem with the car. We didn't want to do any more damage or to the car um, mechanically, so we uh, decided to retire. <laughs> As you could uh, hear, we, we got a five minute penalty for uh, not going in a tire check zone. So we came out of service and went right where you went straight over the road into a tire check zone. And yeah, it was just a, a simple mistake and one that cost us very dearly. And yeah, it's just one of them things. It made us stronger for the future, I think. So it wasn't all bad. We uh, got the Colin Gray flat out trophy for the event after showing good speed on the first day and something I'm very proud of and uh, still got the trophy hanging up in my uh, room back home. So it's always something that I'm going to remember this rally by. Congratulations indeed to another flying driver. So guys, that was a look at the Circuit of Ireland 2015. Uh, no idea what way this video is going to turn out. I thought it'd be funny to look at a video from the past and talk about it a little bit and yeah, give you give you my insight view on what went on. And this is one of the most memorable events I've ever done. Showed my pace against world class drivers and uh, we, we got the Colin Cray Flat Out Trophy. So definitely want to do the uh, Circuit of Ireland in the future whenever it comes back. Fingers crossed. But yeah, give this video a like, uh, subscribe to the channel, give me a comment, let me know what if you'd like to see more of these or if the video was terrible, let me know that as well. And uh, yeah, stay tuned to the next video. Cheers guys and see you in the next one. Bye bye.